Okay, so now that we kind of understand a little bit of how stuff moves through the sky, um, kind of where we are in a position in the sky, um, we can talk about how long it takes for things to move throughout the sky. I'm sure you guys, uh, everybody out there understands that, um, you know, there's one day, uh, there's 24-ish hours, but there are actually several types of days that we can talk about. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is what's called a sidereal day. Um, another way to think about that is a star day. So if we look over here to the east and we zoom in and we pick a star like, let's say that one there. And we go back just a little bit in time until that hits right on the horizon, right about there. So. We can look at the time here and see that it's uh, 12.54, I actually want to pause that. Okay, let's go back just a little bit until we can barely just see it right there. Alright, so the time here is, uh, we're going to try to do this as close as we can, it's going to be a little bit off, but we see that it's... 1253.52. So if we go 24 hours, let's kind of watch that. You want to see that same star. Just wait for this to fly around and back to us. Don't want it to go too fast. Oops, we missed it. Hit that button too many times. So let's go back until we get that right on the horizon again. Do, 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 right there. Let me pause that. So now we see that it's 5117-ish. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there and you're probably wondering why there is a discrepancy and well that's because the earth doesn't rotate exactly um, 24 hours but we're also looking at the uh, combined effect of the earth's rotation not being perfectly 24 hours and the movement of the earth through space so it's part of the orbit and so when we look at that, we actually come up with a discrepancy that uh, stars will rise about four minutes earlier each day. And that is because of these differences in how things are actually moving through the sky or through space and how it's rotating in space. So a sidereal day or a star day is actually 23 hours, 56 minutes and four seconds. But that depends on where we are in the orbit of the Earth. That's kind of an average because since the Earth is in an elliptical orbit, it sometimes moves a little bit faster, sometimes moves a little bit slower, and so we actually see some different effects going on, so it's a little bit different, um, so that's kind of the average. Um, there are other types of days too, so that was the star day, but that is also the one that you know astronomers use, that's the one that your uh, telescope is tracking with, um, if you were to try to track with any of these other ones, you'll notice that the, it doesn't track exactly with the stars. And so this is the one like when you turn your uh, telescope on and you start uh, looking at objects, it'll actually show you, uh, if you go into the menu, it'll actually show you a couple different ones. And this is a sidereal rate. So this is your star rate. And that's what you want to be looking for. Um, so there's other... Uh, days out there. Another one's going to be a solar day. So this is called a uh, solar day or the sun day. Don't get confused with Sunday the day day. <laughs> um, a solar day is basically the time it takes the earth to rotate to cause the sun to rise one day to the next sunrise. Um, they call this a diurnal motion of the sun. 
Um, this accounts for the rotation rate of the Earth and the orbital motion of the Earth relative to the Sun. Um, so it's actually different and so we can do the same thing and we'll pull up the, the Sun. So we gotta go forward again, bring the Sun out. So we'll zoom in on the sun. Okay, so we'll try to get this in the same spot every time. But we'll try to we'll look at that. So right now the time is six, uh, six, seven, forty-eight ish. Uh, this isn't an exact thing. You can calculate it to be a little bit more exact, but we're going to change it a little bit. So in a full day, we'll actually see what it looks like again. And instead of having to do that, we'll just change the time to the next day. And you'll notice that the stars moved relative to the background. When we jump back and forth, I'll do that. So we go here. So look at the position of that star. There and there. You notice the sun is a little bit higher one time than the other, even though we're not moving here on Earth. And so it actually comes out to be anywhere between about 30 to 45 seconds, depending on where you are on the Earth, um, because of how you know spheres rotate. And so we can kind of give an idea like, yeah, look, the sun actually changes position slightly every morning. And some cool things come out from that. Uh, so another interesting thing that you can look at uh, by looking at how the sky moves is a thing called the analemma. And so the analemma is this kind of figure eight pattern um, that you can create. If you take an image of the sun, um, maybe like once a week or once a day uh, throughout the entire year, and you actually get to see this figure eight. And what this is, it's just kind of a projection, a two dimensional projection of the three dimensional motions of the earth uh, due to its tilts and its orbital eccentricity. Um, and the, a few of these parameters together kind of pulls up this thing right here. Um, here on Earth, the top part is representative of the summer, and down here it's the winter. And you can kind of get an idea of that. So if this is south, you can see that the southernmost position of this of the sun is far th uh, farthest south, um, and opposite of that is farthest north. So it kind of gives you a, a path of the sun um, throughout the day if you take it at the same time. All right, so. Now if you compare a solar day to a sidereal day, you'll notice it's a little bit different. Um, so if you want to track the sun with your telescope, there are settings in your telescope that you can set to set a solar day rate. That way when you're tracking the sun, you can do it a little bit more precisely and a little bit more accurately when it's uh, moving through the sky. So you're not having to... Uh, kind of bump your telescope around a little bit, but that's assuming that you have it set up at the north polar axis in the first place. Um, because if you don't, then your other effects of it not tracking with the Earth are going to be kind of overwhelming the motion of the sun. Um, so uh, there's another day. It's called a lunar day. This is one that um, you don't really hear of and don't really have an effect of um, very often. Uh, most people probably even haven't heard it, but this isn't a day like uh, um, a day on the moon that is different, and that's actually a, a full day on the moon is about 29 days, 29 and a half days. Um, but we're talking about like how the, the the moon moves through the sky, and so if we were to look at the moon, you would actually do the same thing we did before, and notice that it actually rises about 50 minutes earlier every single day so if you're sitting there trying to figure out 
what tomorrow is going to what time this the moon is going to rise tomorrow it's going to be about 45 to 50 minutes uh, sooner um, so uh, the good thing is there's a lot of apps out there you can download and that'll give you um, the times of all of these risings and stuff so you don't have to try to figure it out on your own but you can if you want so um, that kind of leads us to a question is like is the clock time that you guys are seeing on you know your phones and everything is that actually the same as any of these and it's not really especially if you take into account um, the difference between your local time and the time of your actual clock um, because if you're here in like here in America so we have specific places in each of the time zones um, where that time is actually specified so like uh, I'm here in mountain time and so our mountain time is actually based off of uh, Denver Colorado so we're actually you know a little bit farther you know locally in time than Colorado is so if you were to look at a sundial which is kind of like a projection of uh, the Sun's shadow and show that to you real quick um, you'll notice that there are markers here for the time and then the Sun's shadow will give you uh, your local time and so your local time is actually a little bit different than the time that you see on your clock um, because like I said the time on your clock is based off of a slightly different position but if you were in Denver and using this then it would match up fairly well but there is another thing with that so the actual time of the day is a little bit different too and so you get into this thing called uh, the equation of time so if you look at this one you'll see this little chart down here and that is called the equation of time so it's a calculation depending on the time of year of how far away from your clock time or your local time your clock time is and so you notice that this one goes uh, about 15 minutes down to about negative 15 minutes and so this is uh, 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 due to the obliquity of the Earth uh, and its plane and the eccentricity of its orbit. And so it changes the position of the sun just a little bit um, throughout the year to give you this kind of like little squiggle right there. And so if you wanted to get an actual accurate representation of your local time, you would have to take this into account also um, while looking at that. And then on top of that, if you're in a place that uses uh, daylight savings, if you're in daylight savings, you actually have to take into account that uh, different out that difference in that hour, and add that into there. So there's several different things that you have to worry about when you're using a sundial, and these are these are a few of them. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of you know that the 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 time that you experience and like that the time that you see every day is kind of like averaged out and it's actually a little bit more complex than what most people actually think and so no the clock time that you experience is not really the same at all um, it can be different by as much as an hour and a half depending on all of the different factors that you take into account and that's just you know compared to local time um, so you know it gives you an idea of all the different things that you have to worry about if you're kind of jumping into this a little bit more.